you've conquered all forms of media. You've got books, you've got your YouTube, you've got your paper. Um, and um, what, uh, at what point do you with, get with Christine Amapur to become awarded that 2019 Singer Award for Press Freedom? Mm -hmm. How does that come out? I think they emailed me about that. And because I remember, I'm pretty sure I gave a speech at that event too. So what, 2019, Tucson, I think. Yeah, I think they emailed me about that. I've had, I don't know, for me, at the time, it's never something like I really soak in. At the time, I was just like, oh, like, it's just another one of these things. It'll be fun. It's cool. I get to meet these people. But that's really all it is for me. Just like a cool experience to meet those people. And then like a year later, I'll look back on it and I'll be like, oh my God, like why, why wasn't I more freaking out about that then? But I kind of have my freak out delayed, if that makes sense. Delayed, delayed. For, well, if you're going to freak out, honestly, that's the most useful way I think to have it. Yeah. <laughs> you're later after you can't possibly, it can't get in your way. It's already done. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, um, was there any part of it that was terrible making the speech in front of people? Was that nerve wracking or were you, nope, this is nothing. I'm on YouTube all the time. There's no problem. It was speeches for me. I've been doing public speaking since I was pretty little. Um, so for me, speeches have, I mean, even before the paper, I was really into acting and I did a lot of theater things. I mean, I still am, but so I had like, I don't know. I, I was kind of used to speaking in front of an audience. So speaking for me is never really like, it wasn't something I would freak out about. Um, I think I get myself into a state of mind where I'm like, this is just like, this is like not even a big deal. It's no problem. And then afterwards I have my freak out. Um, which, like you said, is very useful. So I'm not like getting in the way of anything. Because I think if I truly soaked in what I was doing, I would probably do a lot worse on the speeches and everything because I'd be kind of freaking out. I'm a little bit jealous. It's almost like a superpower. <laughs> Just put that on hold. I don't need you bad thoughts and energy. I'll, I'll, I'll do that <laughs> <you> later. <laughs> so... Um, Okay, so that happens, and then you become, uh, 2019 also, you become the youngest person in U.S. history to deliver a commencement speech, which esteemed audience can, can view online as well. That's at uh, West Virginia University's uh, Reed School of Media. Mm -hmm. so how, did that, uh, how did you become to be invited to, to give that commencement speech? Oh, well, uh, she, um, Dean Reed, she emailed me. She actually, um, she found me on, what's it, Yellow Pages, like she Googled me and stuff. So she emailed me about this and I was just so ecstatic. That was something where my freak out strategy did not come in handy because I was freaking out before that. I was like so nervous. I was so, because I knew how, like, it was such a big deal for me at the time. And I didn't want to mess up in front of all these people because they only got one commencement speech and I wasn't going to be the one to to, you know, ruin that for them. Like, this is a moment for so many other people and it has nothing like to do with me, basically. So that was something I was super nervous about, but I did it. And I, I think I, I'm pretty happy with how I did. And I'm so happy I got that opportunity. It's probably like the favorite speech I've ever done. Well, if the uh, Steve audience goes and watches it, it's right there on your Twitter feed. They absolutely should go and check it out. Um, mm -hmm. A close-up uh, of you, how many people are in that crowd that you're addressing? Oh, I have no idea, and I don't want to know. <laughs> <laughs> no idea. Um, I just gave, actually, I just gave a keynote speech a few days ago um, in L.A. at the National High School Journalism Convention, and uh, I, like, made the mistake of going into the room. I was giving the speech in the night before, and I saw all the chairs, like, laid out. And I freaked myself out a lot because I'm like, oh my God, those are going to be people. So I try to, I try to like not, I try to think they're like Sims or something. Like they're not real people. <laughs> <laughs> so you're, you're the star of a video game and it's just a bunch of uh, computers yeah. staring at you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Some AIs. That's a good strategy. <laughs> uh, who's to say it's not true? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. If reality is a simulation, then there's no there's no need to be nervous <laughs> ever. <laughs> That's probably a downside to, to thinking that way. It just hasn't occurred to me yet. 